welcome everybody. Looks like we're still connecting to audio. For those of you who can hear me, welcome. Think you can hear me, hopefully. If you can hear the sound of my voice, give me a thumbs up. Yes, thank you, David. Perfect. I had a very odd little message that popped up, even though it looked like I was unmuted. I don't think I was. Perfect. All right. If we have any issues or my audio stops suddenly, go ahead and just drop a note into chat or give me a thumbs up. Hopefully there's no technical issues today. We'll see what happens. Welcome, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here with you today. We have a few more people joining, so I'm going to keep letting people in the room. We have quite a few people registered today, and I know that schedules are always a little, a little different. So um, some people are able to attend in person. Others are um, registering to get that recording, too. So I'm thrilled to have you here. This is awesome. Thanks, everybody, for joining today. I am recording and I will definitely get this recording out to everybody. Um, it'll be sometime tomorrow before I'm able to send this out. Um, I will also be posting this out in, uh, we actually have a community Slack channel as well. And I'll send you all that link a little bit later uh, towards the end of this session today, in case you'd like to join that as well. But I will get this recording out to everybody. So while we're getting settled in and getting ready to start, um, I will go ahead and there we go. I'm going to shift to the next slide really quickly, just so you can see uh, some introductions. So I'd love, I'm going to give my introduction in a second. I'd love for all of you to take a moment to introduce yourselves. You can go ahead and do that in chat. That's just fine. Um, tell me anything you'd like to share uh, share with us um, where you're teaching at, if you'd like. What do you teach? Have you used CodeHS before? Um, what's your experiences with CodeHS? I, also, something I'd be curious about as well is, have you looked at the IHT or IST uh, courses? Or have you taught with the previous one, IDT? You can go ahead and do that in chat. And while you're all doing that, I will take a moment to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Lori, and I'm a PD specialist here at Code HS. I am fairly certain I have met some of you before, possibly in other uh, virtual workshops, maybe in person. I've gotten to come to uh, Georgia a few times in the past. And uh, so some of your names are looking very familiar. I'm very excited to be back here with all of you today. I have... Um, gotten to work with Georgia teachers quite a bit over the last three and a half years since I've been at Code HS. And uh, it's one of my favorite places in the world to go to. I love Georgia. Um, so I'm thrilled that I got to be on these sessions with all of you today. Hello, everybody. Hey, David, teaching intro to software. Awesome. And a newbie. Yes. So excited. We'll get to experience some of the uh, some of the activities today from uh, intro to software or IST and also a little bit from IHT as well. And you use Code HS for principles of CS. Love it. Hey, Anne Marie. Awesome. And you do teach IHT. Great. Awesome. You know, this is going to be another really good opportunity as well to really connect with some other CS educators. So if you've got some teaching tips that you feel like, hey, this is something that worked for me or, or here's something that caught me off guard. Please share that as we go. This is going to be a great time for us to um, share uh, strategies, instructional strategies, and just connect with other teachers who, who know the struggle. <laughs> so definitely feel free to share. Hey, Kim, teaching in Buford. Never used Code HS and no experience. Oh, Kim, I love it. So no experience with computer science nor Code HS. Very excited about that. This is about the point in this, this session when I like to share a little bit about my background as well. So I was in K-12 education for 20 years prior to coming to Code HS. I was a technology director and I'm actually in South Dakota um, at a very small, well, a small school district by South Dakota standards. It probably wasn't that small, but um, I was the K-12 tech director uh, for all 20 years. And for about 10 of those years, I was also the high school computer science teacher. 
I was also in a very cool situation where I got to be the middle school computer science teacher, and I even got to go into the elementary. So it was a pretty great experience. But before I got into tech for all of those years, all those years ago, I was actually in ELA. I was an ELA teacher who had absolutely no experience. And I will say that Code HS is the reason that I actually know how to program. And yeah, I'm very, very passionate about uh, uh, computer science and how empowering it can be for ourselves as teachers and for our students. And uh, I use Code HS in my own classroom and that's why I'm here today. Hello, Ruben. Let's see, teaching IST and CSP this year. Awesome. So last year you started with IST. Awesome. And this year you're starting with CSP. That is great. Uh, let's see. Oh, and you are a math teacher. Excellent. Oh, math still. I, I'm, I'm okay with it, but that's the subject that still scares me. I love it. Came to know about Code HS and MathCon this summer. Excellent. Cool. I'm so excited for you. Um, I will say that Code HS for myself was a very transformational thing for both me and my students and my classroom. So I'm very excited that you are on Code HS now. Hi, Jeffrey. Changing from a math tutor to a new computer science teacher, never used Code HS and no experience with teaching computer science. I'm so excited to have some newbies in our audience today. Um, and I can tell you all that I am not going to just throw us all into the deep end. Um, I'm going to actually get you enrolled into a section today so you can experience the platform from a student perspective as well. We are going to, of course, do an overview of the courses or of IDT and IST. Or not. There's too many I's, D's, T's, S's, and H's. We're going to focus on intro to software technology and intro to hardware technology today. Um, but we will get you into the platform. And I am, I, I have definitely planned this so you don't have to have experience. I've got lots of links for you and I'll share out this slide deck in a little bit. All right. Wonderful. It's so good to see all of you. Oh, cool. So David mentioned Code HS has been the only resource that you've been able to find that provides specific resources and lesson plans for CS courses. I am so glad that you are enjoying Code HS. Um, you know, I, I came to Code HS also as uh, uh, I had just started teaching computer science, I had taught it for a couple of years, and I really struggled trying to find curriculum that worked for me. And then my school district was making a shift to a one-to-one -one program with Chromebooks. And I suddenly felt like, oh no, now what? How do I teach programming? I had been installing IDEs for all those years. And now what? I can't do that on a Chromebook. And that was how I found Code HS. And that is one of the reasons it was just absolutely transformational. I started using Code HS myself as a teacher in 2014. Um, and that was long before we even had the whole array of classes and or courses that are available. And now we have well over 100. And I don't know what other resource I would even use if I went back into the classroom again. So love to hear that you're enjoying it, David. All right. For anybody who's just joining us, I haven't shared out any links yet. Um, but uh, we are just doing some introductions in chat right now. So if you'd like to go ahead and toss a little information about yourself into chat, that would be great. So Ruben, there are some options for purchasing Code HS, and I can give you a link to uh, get in touch with somebody about that. I am on the PD side, so I don't have a lot of good information about pricing and things, but I can definitely get you in touch with somebody. Um, what I will say also is that for myself, as former Code HS educator for a lot of years from 2014 to 2019, um, I was in a position where I also was never able to purchase the pro version. And I can tell you that you will not be restricted from any of the curriculum on the free version also. There's a lot of really amazing pro tools. I know I asked for pro every single year. I did not get it, <laughs> but I was able to teach. At the time I uh, had gotten to my last couple of years at the district, I was teaching, oh gosh, five classes a semester all with Code HS. 
on the free plan. So it's definitely still doable if, if it doesn't work out to purchase Pro. Um, hey, Mark, it's good to see you back. So Mark is joining us from uh, another state, but it is so awesome that he is joining. Uh, Mark has been at a ton of different uh, 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 workshops this summer. And I think uh, this is just a testament to uh, the, the community that we have of Code HS educators. So once you become a Code HS educator, we just kind of pull you into the fold and we are here to support you all the way through. So, so good to see you back, Mark. And no worries if you do have to head out early, not a problem. We so appreciate that you're here. All right, we are getting an amazing crowd today. I'm so excited to have all of you. A few more people joining. Um, so if you're just joining, again, I'm going to mention that we're just tossing a few introductions in the chat. And if you are just joining, my name is Lori. I'm a PD specialist here at Code HS. I've been with Code HS for about three and a half years. Prior to that, I was a longtime Code HS educator. So I'm super excited to be here with all of you today. So I'm going to go ahead and head to our next slide because we have a ton of stuff that we want to cover. And bear with me as I toss some links into chat today. Let's see, make sure I type that right. There we go. So here is the link for the slides. Please feel free to grab the slides. You can also scan that QR code. And um, I will absolutely have these slides curated in the workshop section as well today. So you will have access to these after the uh, presentation as well. Um, but there will be some links here and I will be trying to keep up with those links um, and tossing those into chat as well. It's always helpful to have the slides. Hey, Rob, it's, I'm so glad to have you join us today from Alpharetta, Georgia. Did I say it right? I think I did. I'm not going to pat myself on the back till I know for sure. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join us today. Excellent. You're teaching IST and middle school for high school. Oh, in middle school for high school credit. Love it. That's exciting. So cool. Awesome. Okay, I got it right. Whew. So glad you could join us today. Um, Jeffrey uh, asks, are there any suggestions on ga gaining basic programming skills? Um, I would love to hear from the entire community who's joining us today. So go ahead and toss your suggestions into chat. Um, what I will, I, I will be very honest with you. When I started teaching computer science, I had uh, gone back to school to actually get my, uh, my certificate so I could actually be licensed to teach CS. And I eventually got a master's in educational technology and computer science as well. And as I was starting to teach computer science, I can tell you, I came to it with a little bit of programming knowledge of HTML and everything else I learned with my students. I absolutely credit Code HS for what I know. Code, H Code HS is absolutely the reason I know Python. It's the reason I love Python. That's one of my favorites. Um, it's And it's completely, I have to give Code HS all the credit for Java. I was not an object-oriented uh, programmer by any means. It wasn't my first thing. And it's Code HS is the reason I know it. So you will absolutely, if you put yourself in the position as a lead learner in your classroom and be honest with your kids that, hey, sometimes they might have an answer before you, I promise you, you are going to learn programming. Yeah, and Mark, I agree with you. Python is an amazing first language. Um, there is so much, and now CodeHS actually has an entire Python pathway as well. So it's a great first language. Middle school uh, Georgia courses start with Python and go into Carol, and Carol is more of a JavaScript language. Either one of those is a great entry point, and I would recommend either. Uh, David mentions that last year he was simply a few lessons ahead of the students in JavaScript. And you had some experience with other languages beforehand. Cool. Yeah, and often that's the way it is. It's very, very common in computer science to find that um, we there's just not a lot of computer science teachers. So often those of us who go into computer science are transplants from other fields. And uh, I, I know I work with some band directors who are some amazing computer science teachers, and uh, they love it now. There's so many of us that decide that, wow, this is our passion. And it's 
really an amazing field. And we can definitely, Jeffrey, as we get into the course catalog, I'll show you some ways to enroll yourself into some courses as well. Truly, Code HS is the reason that so many of us, myself included, know programming languages. Python, um, I definitely honed my skills in JavaScript in Code HS, Java, C++. Um, I got better at HTML, CSS, Bootstrap because of Code HS. Yeah, tons of amazing stuff here to help you. Awesome questions so far, everybody. I'm so excited that you are all here and asking questions. And if you are feeling like you'd like to introduce yourself, please go ahead and do that. We'd love to have that chat just blow up with discussions. Okay, so next thing, I know we've got some brand new Code HS teachers here. So if you do not have a Code HS account, this link is for you. There we go. I just dropped this one into chat. So if you could head out to codehs.com slash sign up, I would love it if you could go ahead and uh, take a couple minutes and create your free educator account. It is completely free, completely free. So Code HS, as you're doing that, I'll just mention Code HS does have kind of a, a I guess you could say a freemium model where we do, um, teachers can use Code HS as a free teacher for as long as you want, but we do have a pro plan as well. And that pro plan is gonna give you access to additional teacher tools, um, like some access control tools, some grade book, things like that. Now, that being said, you can still grade as a free teacher. I did it for many years. I even did it when I taught a graduate class for continuing education for educators. I still use the free plan. Um, it's not quite as streamlined, but it really was not a problem. Once I got into a rhythm, it absolutely works. Um, and free teachers, you have access to the entirety of the course catalog, including all the Georgia courses. Hi, Robin. I'm so glad you could join us today. Yay. We're glad you're here too. Veteran math teacher. Love it. Woohoo. Yay to veteran teachers. Yay to all teachers. We're celebrating all teachers. Uh, veteran math teacher of 20, 20 years, new convert to CS. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. So glad you're here with us today. And if you do have any problems signing up for your Code HS educator account, go ahead and drop a message either into chat or we do have a Q&A feature enabled for this workshop today. Um, the Q&A might be easier for me to keep track of if there's a big question, like you're having a problem with an account. Since I am on my own today, I'm flying solo. Um, it'll I don't want to take too much time away to fix an account issue right now, but that makes sure that I can get back to you afterwards if you drop it into Q&A. Hi, Tanya. 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 I think I said that wrong. Hi, Tanya from Cartersville. Transplant from environmental science. My husband is a wildlife biologist. Um, I, yeah, I get to hear, he's actually done some environmental science classes recently. Uh, third year teaching computer science. Cool. May have to leave early. No worries. And by the way, if you do have to leave early, or if anybody has to leave early, or even if you don't, if you get out of this workshop and you think, oh, Lori said something or something was talked about, I don't know how to do this. What do I do? Know that we are always here to help. I included on this very first slide a couple of email addresses. So mine is listed right here, Lori at CodeHS.com. Super simple. Easiest spelling of Lori, L-O-R-I. And I also included Kayla on here as well. So Kayla is a customer success manager who really focuses on the state of Georgia. Kayla and I have hung out many times in Georgia. Um, oh, we always hit up as many restaurants as we can when I get to go to Georgia. And uh, you can also email Kayla at codehs.com as well. And I'll show you another support email as well. All right. So. Once you've signed up for your free educator account, and just another quick note about that as well, if you are signing up for the first time today, 
You may not have uh, access to the solutions for the activities just yet. We do go through a verification process on our end to make sure that we are only verifying teachers and that no students have access to the solutions. Um, so that will take just a little bit. Um, our support team is super fast, so it shouldn't take long, but you can still use your account to participate today. So once you've either created your account and signed in, or if you've signed in with an existing educator account, I would then love for you to browse to the link you see on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and add that into chat as well. Make sure I did it right, there we go. CodeHS.com slash go slash GA 2023. And that is going to enroll you in the workshop section that we're going to be using for today and actually for the other sessions as well. So we did have a our first session yesterday. And if you missed it, no worries, because I am also curating all of that information, all those resources, all the links, everything. And uh, I can make sure to make sure that all of you have access to that as well. The session yesterday was on the CS pathways in Georgia. We have a lot of pathways. I'm going to review things just a little bit in our workshop today. Um, but you will have access to that entire workshop as well. And we do have another workshop coming up tomorrow and Thursday. Tomorrow's workshop is about uh, rural CS teachers in Georgia and how to stay connected. Um, give you a little bit of help with the platform and things like that. I am a rural teacher, and I know for myself, rural means something very different than what it means for other teachers who are rural. Um, I mentioned that I'm in South Dakota. The township that I live in has about 150 people. So that is how rural I am. I'm very rural. I cannot see my neighbor. <laughs> so, um, But rural also means small schools. You may not be in a close proximity to um, a large urban city. Um, you might be in a much smaller town for your area. And so all of that means rural. And if you're just interested in learning more about Code HS, come on into the rural session. We invite everybody. So it's a community. At the end of the day, we are all a community. So we'd love to have you join that as well. Um, the other one that might be really helpful for um, those of you who either need a refresher or maybe you're completely new to Code HS is the session on Thursday, where we will be doing more of a getting started kind of session. On um, that one, we're really going to focus in on setting up our course, setting up our section, um, really making sure that we are ready to go for the school year. That one is also going to include a sample lesson, a full sample lesson from the student perspective. Um, so that's going to give you a chance to, it gives me a chance to sort of be a teacher. <laughs> and I'm going to lead you through a lesson. We're also going to talk about instructional strategies that you can use with Code HS. All right, so let's see how we're doing. I'm going to take a peek at our section. Okay, we've got a few more people joining. I'm gonna walk you through this process really quick. If I click this link, and it's a little slow on my end, but we are on Zoom, so I'm just gonna blame Zoom. And actually, I'm really cranky at how slow that is. I'm gonna click it again, because why not? I'm sure that'll help it. There we go, it sort of did. So this is the screen you'll see. So once you're signed into Code HS, if you click that link that I dropped into chat or the link on the slides, you are going to have this uh, join section or join class. And it's gonna ask you to join the Georgia Workshop Series, summer 2023. You're gonna see there's a couple of Ms. G's for teachers and Kayla is also listed here. And you can click join section and that will get you added in. I think I've joined it about at least three times. So I'll go ahead and not join it again. It will be grumpy at me. There we go. We're getting everybody in. Perfect. Love it, love it, love it. So what you're seeing is the teacher side of the platform from this perspective. So if you are just using Code HS for the very first time, know that you, you won't see this part of the, the um, platform just yet because you are joining as a student. Um, but we will get you better acclimated to using the platform very soon. All right. How are we doing, everybody? 
Any questions? Okay. And know that I'm completely fine with interruptions. I know that sometimes I get overly excited and you will hear me say probably often that, oh, this is my favorite thing. And you'll think she has a million favorite things. <laughs> so <laughs> you're like, wow, she's going too fast. Go ahead and interrupt me. You can either do it in chat. If you're comfortable unmuting and I'm gonna make sure everybody can unmute. Um, yep, you should be able to unmute if you'd like. Um, feel free to unmute and just say, hey, Lori, slow down, or hey, Lori, I've got a question, and that's completely fine. All right, one more link for everybody. This we choose, there are four options are there. What's that? Uh, whom can we choose because your name is there, Kayla name is there. Four oh, names. when you join the section? Uh -huh. So when you join the section, you should just be able to click join section, this blue button. Okay. Yeah, that's a great question. Hey, thank you for that. That's never, that hasn't been something I've thought about before. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you bet. So this is actually a really cool feature of CodeHS. We might as well jump into a few of the features and this can be done with free or pro. You can actually have multiple co-teachers so if any of you are in a co-teaching situation, or if you have colleagues who maybe live across the state or in another county or just another school away, you can actually co-teach with them and you can enroll all your students in one section. This is a really cool option that I actually used quite a bit um, when I was in the classroom. And I still do it a little bit, actually. I will, I, I will have invites from teachers who want me to join or, or contribute to a discussion. And so I joined their section. So it's pretty fun. That was a great question. Thank you. All right. So this last link, this one is an attendance link. Whoops. Not sure why it's not typing for me. Hang on one second. Because I don't think I'm on the right thing. Hmm. Give me one second, everybody. This is being just a little bit cranky for me. I'm going to try to get this going again. There we go. Not sure why the focus wouldn't shift for me there. All right, I'm gonna drop this link into chat. So this link will only work if you are signed into CodeHS first. This is going to be our attendance link and it's gonna let you tell us not only that you are here, but after the workshop, I go out and I send certificates to everybody. So if you need a certificate of attendance, this is the link you will wanna click. When I click this link, this should be what I see. And that's it. That tells me that you were here and you will get a certificate. Know that if you are waiting for a certific certificate to come your way, it will not be coming from my email address. It will come from hello at codehs.com. So if you don't see that, and that will get sent easily in the first half an hour when we're done, I'll send that immediately. So if you don't see that by tomorrow morning, go ahead and drop me an email and I will send that to you manually then. All right, so let's jump into our workshop. I'm gonna buzz through this first little part. I wanna tell you just a little bit. I know we've got some people who are new to CodeHS, so I wanna talk a little bit about what CodeHS actually is. So CodeHS is really a comprehensive platform. It's, it, I even would call it a learning management system. Um, and I really want you to think about the word comprehensive when you think about CodeHS because we are providing now, and I still didn't change that, we are providing K through 12 web-based computer science curriculum. Elementary is a fairly recent addition to our curriculum offerings. It has a little different model than middle school and high school, um, but we do provide K-12 web-based computer science curriculum. And I'll give you an idea of what's in the course catalog very soon, so you can see all the courses that are available. And we also love to provide, I know I love to provide professional development for teachers. It gives me a chance to connect with teachers and just provide help for anything that you need as you're preparing to teach. Um, so we will get into that more today. A little bit about our background. I like to include this because it's just one of my favorite stories. So the way that Code HS started was when these two gentlemen on the screen Jeremy Keishan and Zach Gallant met at Stanford in their freshman year. 
Um, they were actually both helping to teach computer science courses and or the intro to computer science courses. And they were building some of the tools that were being used in the course. And the thing that surprised them the most is how many of their classmates had never experienced computer science. And not only that they didn't experience it, but they didn't even have the opportunity to experience it prior to coming to Stanford. And they felt like this is just wrong. Um, even back then, both Jeremy and Zach knew that computer science and programming is a foundational skill. And every student and every teacher should have access to really high quality computer science education. So in their senior year in 2012, Jeremy and Zach founded Code HS, and they made it their mission to make computer science curriculum that is accessible by all students and all teachers around the world. And so they took that cool little pink van that you see on the screen. And if you look at the top of the van, you'll see the little Carol the dog up there. And the first Carol the dog. Carol can be any dog you want Carol to be. Um, but they drove around two big road trips around the US, visited classrooms, and taught computer science classes. And uh, I'm still seeing pictures from teachers to uh, who who are sharing those early, early memories. So really, really cool. I love that story because this was truly a passion project. Oh, no problem, Mark. We'll see you soon. If you do need to drop off anybody, no worries. So the mission of Code HS is to empower all students to meaningfully impact the future. And when we say read, write code, we truly mean that. We absolutely believe that coding is foundational and it should be considered one of those core classes in every classroom, in every school, in every state. Uh, so this is our mission and we still live by this today. All right, so I also wanted to include a few links here. I'm not going to take a ton of time to go through these in detail, but I do think it's really important that you have access to these links from uh, the Georgia DOE and um, to really understand what the state plan is for computer science, especially if you're new to computer science. Um, so we have the Georgia Computer Science Plan. And let me go ahead and grab that link. And I'll drop it here. And I'll also include this link elsewhere too, so you can grab it. Um, but definitely familiarize yourself with the Computer Science Plan for the state of Georgia um, to understand the direction. And I also listed the link here for the CTAE uh, IT pathways. I'll go ahead and drop this here. I'm, you may have seen this, but I like to include this just to make sure that you've got all the information you need as you're preparing for your school year. I love seeing all the pathways. I was uh, also a former CTE teacher for computer science, and my, uh, my, my pathway was also included in the IT strand of the CTE. Um, CTE strands here in South Dakota, but you can see all of the different uh, pathways that are available. The cool thing is that Code HS has full pathways for computer science and web development. So you can actually access all of the pathways or all of the courses for both of those pathways through computer uh, through Code HS. And we include courses for almost every other pathway as well. I don't think we have one for a course for the financial technology, but otherwise I do believe we have courses that fit in to every single one of those pathways. The two complete ones are computer science and maybe it's computer science and web development. Okay, and one other link. Um, you know, we do have some cybersecurity courses as well. So if I jump back over here, yeah, there's a cybersecurity pathway. And in the um, IHT course, you are going to see some really cool cyber lessons. I love cybersecurity. There are so many places you can go with, uh, with that kids can have uh, opportunities for in their post-secondary lives with cybersecurity. So the courses that you see here, we do offer the Intro to Hardware Technology. We do have an advanced cyber course and we have a uh, fundamentals of cyber. I don't believe those are fully um, 
aligned to Georgia standards. Let, we'll take a look at those. It's pretty close though. So I'll show you where those are at shortly. There's so many amazing courses. It's so cool. So um, this is also a guide that I want to drop out here for everybody. This is the Code HS guide. There we go. So I'll go ahead and open this up because this is also really helpful as you're thinking about teaching your courses this year. You can get some additional information about Georgia. And, the, uh, and actually, oh, we do have the full computer science plan linked here as well. And we talk a little bit about standards alignment here. I'm going to show you a cool standards alignment tool in just a minute. And you can see the full fi uh, fifth through 12th CS curriculum pathway um, that we've put together for Georgia and some suggested courses as well. Um, one of the things we've really focused on, and you can learn more about this from the workshop from yesterday, but um, we have really focused on vertical alignment for the pathway in Georgia, because we know that, and honestly, what you all do in Georgia is pretty amazing in terms of pathways. I know so many other states do not have this kind of approach to computer science. So I love seeing what Georgia's doing. Um, and there's really great, there's some really good vertical alignment that we see right now. Um, but you can definitely see that when you start taking a look at these pathways that are available. And I'm going to just scroll down for a second in this. I think on page seven, you can actually see the Georgia IT pathway, the Georgia courses that uh, that are included in that pathway. And does Code HF, Code HS have a fully aligned course? So you can see that computer science, the computer science pathway is fully aligned in Code HS. Cybersecurity has a partial alignment. Uh, game design is partial, Internet of Things is partial, programming is partial, um, and where is our other full one? There we go, web development. Web devel development is also fully aligned in Code HS. So there's two full pathways, but we have courses included in every single other pathway that you can see. There's only a handful of them that don't have a course. Networking being one of those. Um, Amani, did you have a question? Yes, thank you so much. I have a question on the web and digital design. I know yeah. you just mentioned that it was partial. Mm -hmm. um, specifically for my eighth grade, I did do the HTML. Um, is there anything in addition with the gaming side or is there, my class is very difficult. Uh, they're all new beginners to the idea of coding. So I thought bridging HTML over to game design would work. Yep. I'm looking to hear, is that the right train of thought or I guess fit in where you get in kind of thing or? That's not a bad approach at all. I know a lot of teachers who start with web design and then bridge into game design with that. Um, something else you could maybe bring into that and we can look at the pathways and see if there's something that might make sense there. But I would maybe even lean into a little bit of JavaScript for those kids as well. Get them started in HTML. You could do a little bit of an intro into JavaScript with maybe some Carol the dog. And um, that might be a really good entry into some game design as well. Yeah. Because my seventh grade, who are now eighth graders, last year I introduced to Python. They uh -huh. did on the Python really well, but when we started doing design of your websites, and then I wanted to connect the gaming part of design, I yeah. lost my eighth graders. So this year I'm going to try it. Okay. I'm interested in the Java. This will be my first time trying it for this year. So uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. And we can do some, I'm excited for you. This is awesome. But we can do some more digging and see what else we could do with those middle school kids too, for sure. I love that idea. Yeah, I've heard a lot of teachers who start with HTML and then start shifting into game design. So that might be a really good option for you. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, you. Yeah, you bet. I'm going to take note of that and we can connect later too and really take a look at our options there. Love that. 
All right. So again, the two that are fully aligned are computer science and web development. And I want to show you this link. So I'm going to drop this one in chat. There we go. So this link is the state page for Code HS. So we've created pages for all, all 50 states, um, but of course we'll focus on Georgia. So this is gonna show you all of the Georgia courses here. So you'll see we've still included IDT. So if you have been teaching intro to digital technology, that one technically has, it has been retired as of June 30th but we do still have it in the course catalog. So we're not taking it away. Um, so that's still there. You can still see we've got Georgia Foundations of Computer Programming. And by the way, this one is a middle school course. And this one does use Python. This starts with Python. Then there is another middle school course for Foundations of Secure Information Systems. This has a little bit more cyber in it. And then I was thinking we had one more. Oh, it is right here. For some reason, it's mixed up in order, but we have Georgia Foundations of Interactive Design. And this one is one that includes a little bit more web design. So, Amani, did you maybe look at this course last year? Yeah, I was familiar already with the aligned curriculum. Um, like I said, with my class, once we started getting involved with Again, it's only my eighth grade. They're the ones that were more difficult to get excited on the coding and designing their own websites. Like my seventh grade, they love the Python um, curriculum. That was very, very easy to teach, easy to learn. They were able to do it in class. But um, unfortunately, my eighth grade is the one that's already graduated the high school. Yes, yeah. I'm very familiar with what you're showing on the screen. Gotcha. Um, very easy to, to navigate. And I definitely appreciate the upgrade because I do see the differences. Oh, cool. That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, I think uh, it might be, you know, for the for those kids that are going into HTML and maybe into that game design, I think shifting them from Python to an intro to JavaScript might be helpful. So that might be a helpful option, but I will be the guinea pig this year because I will try it. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Um, so then we've got the IST. IHT and Georgia Web Development uh, and Foundations of Artificial Intelligence. So we'll explore the course catalog in a little bit, but I'm going to keep scrolling down because I do want to show you. I have a quick question. Yes, yes. So I checked uh, Georgia. I'm teaching IST last year. Also, I taught two semesters and this year I'm teaching when I checked the uh, uh, Georgia DOE the curriculum. Yep. It is showing something like uh, uh, first two you three units are showing something something, and when I came to Code HS, it is showing digital footprint and uh, other things. Uh, so that's what uh, I'm. I have no idea. My other oh. computer science teacher is uh, showing something. So what is exactly for IST curriculum Georgia DOE? What it speaks and what code HS? Is it both are same or different? Uh, that's was my question. Sure. And I am shifting to mobile in a, two minutes. And after you answer this, because I had to attend some other professional development. Uh, yeah, no I'll be. Worries. I'll no be in mobile. Yeah, please go ahead and answer this if you. Sure. Can. Yeah. So. If you are comparing maybe the content from the Code HS courses to something that you're seeing on the DOE website, it might look like some things look a little different. We may have our own names for some modules or some lessons, um, but something to look at is on this page with the Georgia standards. So if we find the, not intro to digital tech, but we want, am I passing it? There we go. Georgia Introduction to Software Technology. Notice we are 100% aligned with Georgia standards. So if I click on the view link, this is gonna take me out to the standards mapping. Um, oops, and did I click the right thing? I don't think I did. Nope, I didn't. Intro to Software Technology, I apologize. I clicked the one above it. So this is the standards mapping. So you can see all the standards that the Georgia DOE um, has included for this course, we are 100% mapped. 
And so you can actually see the standards on the left-hand side and the link to the lessons that are aligned to those standards on the right-hand side. So you can be assured that if you teach the Code HS version of intro to software technology, you will be completely aligned to all of the Georgia standards for this course. Does that help? Yeah, that's okay. fine. Thank you. Can you post this link in the chat so I can- Absolutely. Wait. I'm going to post this one because, uh, am I going to post this one? No, I'll post the actual one for IST. So this is for the IST course and it is the standards alignment. There you go. And that will take you right out to this page. This is a really cool standards mapping tool. Um, so like some of the things that we don't necessarily have courses for yet, um, you can actually click these and see if there is a better match. So for instance, like some of the courses that we did not comp don't uh, don't map to entirely like game design, we have a 52% match. We can view that. We can see which lessons are aligned and which lessons might not be aligned. Um, and what's really cool, oh, thank you so much for coming, Ruben. It's so good to have you here. Um, but that way you can actually see some how, how you might need to supplement. And some of the things that you might have to supplement the course, you can actually add directly into the Code HS platform, which is pretty cool. Um, if we don't get time to talk about customization today, which I have a feeling we won't, know that on Thursday for sure, I always try to bring it in my workshops, but Thursday for sure, we're going to hit customization. And that is something that both free and pro teachers can do. So it's pretty cool. You can also check. You can also see if there's other options here, or you can search for other courses to see how those align. Typically, we choose the course that has the, the highest alignment, um, but you can always check that out here. So this is a really, really amazing tool and not enough teachers know about it. So I make sure to talk about this at almost every workshop I'm at too. So, and again, to get to that, you can go to the Georgia State page on Code HS, scroll about halfway down the page until you get to Georgia Standards and you can check those out. All right. So let's go ahead and start talking more now. And thank you for the questions, by the way. As you have questions, keep on asking those. I do have one eye, trying to keep an eye on chat in case we have somebody who does not want to unmute. No worries. I will try to watch for that as well. So um, let's go ahead and talk about the course overviews. So the courses that we are talking about today are intro to software technology and intro to hardware technology. These courses are two courses that are taking the place of intro to digital technology. So the intro to digital technology course, and I'll give you all this link in just a moment. So let me head out to the course catalog. There we go. And I'll drop this into chat as well. So in the course catalog, you can see all the courses for Code HS. If we wanna filter for just the Georgia courses, notice I have a filter by state and I'm gonna to go to Georgia. There we go. So we can see all the courses that are created here. This is actually where um, some of you were asking about how do I um, work on my programming skills. If you see a course you wanna enroll in as a student, you can click on enroll directly from the course catalog to do that. Oh, and by the way, every single Georgia course is also translated into Spanish as well. We are working on getting more and more courses ready to go. I believe we're working through most of our Python courses next. So, but the Georgia courses are ready to go. Um, if I scroll down and take a look, I want to look at the old Georgia Intro to Digital Technology course. And I shouldn't say old, we're not we're not necessarily getting rid of it yet, but it is the one that has been retired this summer. Robin, did you have a question? Yes, um, this is some wonderful information. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I'm wondering also if you have any resources that might be um, helpful in trying to persuade my department chair and maybe some um, 
um, you know, higher ups to pay for the pro version. <laughs> Who do I know? Yeah. <laughs> I have been there and I have done that. Let me see what I can find for you. I am certain I've got some things that I can send you. So I will connect with you. And actually, I'll maybe try to send out any resources to the entire group because I think it's helpful for everybody. So I will get you some information. Sound good? Cool. Awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to help. If I can help, some if I can help teachers get pro because I was that teacher who was always on free you bet I'm there so I'll see what I can do so the Georgia intro to digital technology course was really a foundational course it was one that was very introductory and also included in the um in the pathways now one of the issues that we ran into with having one course is you start to hit that vertical alignment wall where suddenly kids are needing this course for various pathways um, some of the content would have been repeated, and it's it's a pretty big course. There's a lot of stuff in here. So what they ended up doing was actually taking IDT and breaking it apart into two courses. Um, so not only do we have IST and IHT from this one course, but we've also added additional content into both of those courses. So you'll see much of the content that you see here with additional new content for both IST and IHT. So for intro to software technology in particular, um, this, this is a course that it can absolutely be taught at the eighth grade level as well, um, but this is going to be a high school level course, about 160 contact hours. Of course, we do have it translated into Spanish and it is a year long course. And I'm going to go through a little bit about some of the um, new changes and how it's transitioned from IDT. So the IDT course previously had some of these different projects, CIA triad, cyberbullying, and these were mostly in the digital citizenship and cyber hygiene um, module. And what you'll find is that we actually removed those for intro to software technology. So those are no longer a part of that course, but we still do have a digital citizenship and cyber hygiene lesson or module. It's just a little bit shortened. Part of the reason that we did that is because we spread things out in a different way. Sometimes IHT might have some of that content or we've moved it into different modules as well. Intro to software technology is also going to include that real focus on software, of course. And so part of that is gonna be the programming side. So IST includes programming with Carol. That is going to be a JavaScript based uh, programming uh, modules. So we start with programming with Carol, some base, and I'll give you actually, yep, I'll be showing you a little bit about uh, Carol if you've not experienced those lessons and has some Carol challenges as well. So, Intro to, tech, uh, to Digital Technology also had a unit called Networks in the Internet. Well, this has been also split up and it's not included in IST, um, but what we do have included instead is one called Computing Basics. So we talk about some of the differences between software and hardware. Um, we talk a little bit about hardware as well, but file and folder management impacted the internet, future of computing. And then we get into some operating systems and software. You will find that operating systems and software has some overlap between IST and IHT as well, um, because it's kind of, it's one of those things that it's hard to talk about hardware if you're not going to talk about operating systems. Um, so you will see that in both places. And then you'll also see this project called IT Professional. Um, and what is computing? is uh, the other module that was really removed from the IDT course, and it has become computing basics. So both of those are no longer included in intro to software technology. Then, whoops, I'm getting too click happy now. Um, so the other courses that were included in the digital tech course were some additional JavaScript programming courses, or I'm sorry, modules. So JavaScript and graphics and graphics challengers were both included in that IDT course, 
But for IST, we have just included JavaScript and graphics, but we've added an additional what is programming lesson. I love this lesson. I think this is one of the missing pieces that we often see when we talk about programming. Um, this is a very general overview about just what is programming and about the nature of, of programming concepts that are included in all languages. So often when uh, we're teaching programming to our students or we're learning programming for the first time, we often get so wrapped up in the syntax that we forget that we're learning these bigger concepts such as iteration and loops and abstraction and, and all these other concepts that are common to every language. And I feel like the what is programming lesson helps get that across to kids. So they understand that, hey, if I know Python, all I have to know is a little bit of different syntax to learn JavaScript or things like that. And then the item that was removed is RGB colors. Um, there are ways, if you really like that lesson or you want to add that back in, you can do that. Then we have, whoops, web design. So web design was a part of the intro to digital technology. It's still included in IST. There is an introduction to web design. However, what we've done is we've actually broken it up. And so web design is now broken up into HTML and CSS, which makes a ton of sense to me because those two are so very different, completely different things, completely different functions. So that's how we've broken those up. And there's another project, Create Your Homepage. And for those of you who may not be aware, CodeHS does have homepages, have web pages built into the site that we host. So if you want your kids to create their own homepage, and by the way, they don't have to be in a web design course to do that. Every single user, can access the codehs.me pages that we host. Then there is, oops, did I skip something? I did, okay. The next item that we've actually added to software technology is an introduction to web development. This takes web design to the next level. And this is just very introductory for kids. Um, so this is where we start to include um, not just HTML and CSS, but we start to include uh, the JavaScript part um, or jQuery libraries part of web development. Um, so that's, and that's one of the reasons I always think of JavaScript when I think about web design. It's because when we get into web development, we're really using those libraries that go along with JavaScript. So there will be an introduction to web development and a couple of other things that are no longer in IST are the mobile apps project and the final project. So if you're interested in trying out some mobile apps, you can still access that content. We actually have quite a bit of mobile apps content um, that you can pull in as well. And there's a final project that you can still pull in to this course if you'd like to add it. Amani, yes. Sorry to interrupt. For those... Uh... Mobile apps project, is that a web-based platform or do you have to get the permission from your district? Nope, mobile apps should be a web-based. That one should be entirely web-based. Um, we can check that out. Um, I'll show you where we can see that in the catalog as well, but that one should be web-based. We only have a couple of courses that do, well, we have, I guess, a few more than a couple but some courses that you would need to have some installs with, and that would include game design with uh, Unity because you would need the Unity platform. Um, we would also have the Roblox course because that would need the Roblox platform installed. And we do have a couple of physical computing courses that step outside of the bounds of code HS, but I don't know that those need an installation. I think those just use another web-based platform. So yeah, mobile apps should be good to use entirely in code HS. I think there I is the potential to use, I can't recall the app that you use to connect so you can actually see the, the, the game that you create on your mobile device. I would need to look at that a little more, but otherwise it shouldn't um, require any installation on a 
school device. Sidebar question, and sorry to take up the time. Do you think that accessing from a mobile phone to bypass the download on the computer? Um, I have to think outside the box because of the uh, yeah. situation in my school. So, oh, I totally to understand. To still access without being dependent on Chromebooks, and my school is heavy on trying to not say yes to software. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, I honestly think with the mobile apps one, you would be fine on a Chromebook. I don't think you'd need another install. And even if there is, I think it's, um, I don't know if it's still the Expo app that goes on the phone itself. I don't think there is any other installations that are needed for mobile apps. I am going to double check that one because I don't want to steer you wrong there. I know for Roblox and Unity, you definitely need to install those. And I know that Unity is a beast. It is a huge program. I actually tried to use that when I was teaching and I finally just installed it on a couple of machines and called it good. It was just huge. <laughs> so, but yeah, let's talk more about that. Thank you. Absolutely. So those are some of the changes that you're going to see from IDT to IST. Now, hardware technology, you're also going to see some of that content that came from IDT get pulled into this course as well. So this course, the Intro to Hardware Technology, is going to be about 140 contact hours, of course, translated into Spanish as well. And some of the things that got removed from IDT and will not be seen in Intro to Hardware Technology are Programming with Carol, Carol Challenges, What is Computing, JavaScript and Challenges, Mobile Apps Project, and Web Design. So this makes sense because we saw those JavaScript or those programming lessons in the software technology course. This course is going to focus much more heavily on hardware and it's going to figure into those pathways in a different way as well. So some of the things that are included in intro to hardware technology, you will see some digital citizenship and cyber hygiene because I think that should be included in every single course that we ever teach students. I think that's a absolutely something. It should be foundational for our kids. Um, so you'll see all the content that was removed there. And some additional content that gets added into, oops, into Intro to Hardware Technology are some of those more hardware-focused topics. So again, we're going to see operating systems and software. We're also going to see a unit on hardware and a unit called Project Troubleshooting. This can be such, it's so interesting to teach hardware and uh, networking concepts, because I think sometimes we get those kids who aren't really connecting with programming. Maybe they don't feel like they're super creative. They're not certain what to do with HTML, but this might be the topic that speaks to them. Uh, the individual who actually took my place as the district technology director at my old school district was a former student of mine. Yep, I still smile. It just makes me so happy that he's back. But this was what did it for him. He connected to the networking side. So it's, it, I think it's so important to give kids such a range of topics to choose from. So some of the other things that uh, transitioned into intro to hardware technology, um, some of that content from a unit from IDT called Networks and the, and the Internet, uh, modules were translated into IHT into a module called networking. Now, I will say that sometimes if, if you are not super familiar with some networking concepts, this might be a little bit more challenging. And I think part of the challenge comes to in thinking about how do I make this accessible for my kids? Um, because it can be challenging and it can be very abstract to think about networking protocols and standards and uh, um, some of those communication strategies as well. But there's a lot of amazing things we can do with that. Then you will also see some additional new content. IHT is packed with new content. This course makes me so excited. So you're going to see a whole cybersecurity module that includes things like network attacks and really lets kids get into some of, some of the things they think about when they think about the word cybersecurity. So things like hacking and what hackers do to our computers. Um, 
there's also a really cool project called Dig Digital Forensics in this course. And then we wrap up this course as well with computer science careers. If you need additional content to supplement with computer science careers, CodeHS does have an entire career center available to really show kids what can they do with computer science and to show them that, hey, computer science is everywhere. If you want to go into sports, it's going to be super helpful for you to know programming. If you want to go into fashion design, computer science is going to be critical again. So we have an entire career center as well. So lots of new content. And we've got a couple more resources that I really want to share with you. If you've got the slides pulled up, feel free to go ahead and click on those here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop these into chat. These are great when you're thinking about what those differences are. Bear with me one second. Sometimes I just can't type and talk at the same time. There we go. So you're going to see a couple of guides here that we've created for you that talk more about going from IDT to either IHT or IST. And I think I actually, yep, I do have these pulled up in another place, but that's fine. We'll just pull them up 14 more times. I have a lot of tabs open. <laughs> so you're going to see the syllabus is linked here for each of the courses. This happens to be the guide for intro to hardware technology. It's going to tell you what has been removed from IDT um, to create the IHT course. And it's going to give you the specifics, really break down the specifics for each of the modules so you can see what's included here. This is a really helpful feature and a little easier to go through than some slides or to do your own comparison. And the same thing with IST. You're going to see what got removed from IDT what was shortened, and what was added here. So some super helpful resources. All right, so we've got about 25 minutes left, and I want to give you all a chance to try out some of the activities that we see in both software technologies and hardware technologies. So the first activity that I want to show everybody is from Intro to Software Technology, Carol Can't Turn Right. Now, I know some of you may have seen this lesson before, but I want to go over just a little bit so you can all see what the structure of a Code HS lesson is. Think about the scaffolding that's used in that lesson. And then I'm going to start to give you some ideas about ways you can use this lesson in a different way. So if you would like to access this, if you have the slides up, you can actually click this image and it should take you to Carol Cantor and Wright. I'm also going to show you where this lives in the workshop section. Now, if you're not enrolled in this workshop section, that link won't work for you. So if you do need to enroll, I'm going to grab that link one more time. Bear with me while I find it. That's not it. We have so many things. I love it. There it is. And I'm going to drop that link here. So that is the link to enroll in the workshop section. So if you're not in it, you can sign into CodeHS, then click that link that I just threw in the chat. And there, let me move all of us out of the way. There we go. So now in this section, you are seeing the teacher view, but this is pretty close to the same view that you're going to see. I just have a few more bells and whistles on my end. Um, so the way to get to Carol Can't Turn Right is to go to the very first programming with Carol module. It is the third unit in this section. And then I'm going to expand it. And it is the third lesson. When I click on the lesson, I'm going to see all of the activities inside of the lesson. Now, if you would like, and you are enrolled in this section, I'm going to send you the link to the lesson so you don't even have to dig for it. By the way, that's the exact same way you can do that for your kids as well. You can copy the link by clicking on these three dots and clicking copy link. All right, so when we're taking a look at any of the, the lessons in Code HS, something important to note is this structure that you're seeing for the activities. So first of all, it's important to note that everything is organized in a nice little file structure. We have modules. Inside the modules, we have lessons. And inside the lesson, we have activities. And if you see this add new assignment link, teachers, both free and pro, 
you will see that on your end as well when you set up your courses, because you can also add new assignments. And we will get into that more on Thursday, I promise. Maybe even a little bit tomorrow too. So for a lesson, all of the activities, all of the lessons start with the lesson content, which might be in the form of a video. And I'll head into this in just a second. Then there is typically going to be a check for understanding quiz. Now, this quiz is usually pretty short, unless you're maybe teaching APCSP or APCSA, then the, the quizzes get a little bit longer here. But in most of the introductory content, um, you will absolutely have a very short quiz right here. Then you have, and it's very formative in nature, it just checks back in with the kids on that content that they see in the video. Then you'll have an example. So this is a completed code editor that has the code that they've learned in that video. This is an amazing, amazing part of this lesson that I think it's overlooked very often. Um, the examples can be fabulous ways to scaffold for your kids and provide that extra support for learning new concepts in programming um, with this example. And I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. And then you've got an exercise or two. Sometimes you've got more exercises. And in the case of this lesson, we even have a badge. I used to think when I first started teaching that the kids weren't necessarily concerned about the badges. And let me tell you how wrong I was. <laughs> they loved getting those badges. And you can even give them your own badges. So if we want to go into this lesson, you can just click the link here. I'm going to click this preview since I'm seeing this from a little different angle. And this is the way the lesson looks when we start it. This is the same. So the view I see is pretty much the view kids are going to see as well. Now you can watch the video um, or if once you get into it, if you get used to the videos, I know one of the things that would happen to my kids is we'd get a few weeks in or a couple months in and I would hear Ms. G, do we have to watch the video? I don't want to hear the video anymore. So I was always trying to find ways to change this up. So one of the ways you can do that is at the top of your screen. You can actually choose slides and it will take you to the slides that we used during this video. So if you are feeling super comfortable with the content, you can absolutely teach, do some direct teaching with these slides yourself. Um, Robin, do you like that? <laughs> That's usually a thing that somebody has not seen before. So cool. Awesome. So absolutely, this is a fabulous way to do some direct teaching. Now be, you know, be aware sometimes um, the speaker in the video, this one happens to be Jeremy, one of our founders, um, they'll go into some demo, but you've got the slides to start with. So this is an awesome tool. I love using this. Kids also have access to see the slides. Now I'm going to click next to get to the next um, screen. This is the way that kids would trigger that submission process. For teachers and kids too, this is kind of an important thing to note. If they need to just jump around a little bit, you can also take a look at the activity bubbles on the bottom of your screen. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can see all these bubbles. You can actually click on those to navigate as well. Um, and this is important to note because sometimes if a kid gets into an exercise, so say they're doing Fireman Carol and they can't figure out the answer, Sometimes the auto grader won't let them go to the next thing. So in order for them to not get stuck, so if they're at home and working, we want them to keep working, right? They can come in here and click to the next item here. They don't have to click continue. So that's important to know. Um, I know for me, I definitely had those kids who would come say, well, I couldn't figure it out. So I couldn't get everything done. You can still go to the next assignment. <laughs> so little side note, little thing I remembered from my teaching days. So as a teacher, I very often click the activity bubble or you can click on next. So here's the quiz. So you can see it's super short. We're not gonna complete the quiz right here. One of the things that I would do as a teacher is I, well, actually I couldn't do most of this as a teacher because we didn't have customization when I was using the platform. But one of the things you can do is if you don't like the quiz right here, you can move it. So teachers, free and pro. If you don't like this quiz immediately after that lesson content, you can shift it all the way down to the bottom of the lesson and it can be an exit ticket. 
You could also move it to the start of the next lesson, the next day. And now you've got a bell ringer. And it's a nice, short, formative quiz. And so it does not have to stay in this spot if you'd rather put it somewhere else. And it's so interesting. I've had so many debates, or I've seen so many debates with teachers about where they want the quizzes. But you can put it wherever you want it. I'm going to click on the very next activity, which happens to be tower and turn right. This one is an example. So when you first click into the examples, you're going to get this pop-up that tells you what it is, that, hey, it's an example. You can play around with it, change the code, learn how it works. Teachers, I can tell you, if you are not intentional about how you use the examples, very often your kids are going to skip these. So there's a few things that I love to do with the examples. One is code trace. I like to come in here and go through this and trace what the code is going to do. The other thing I like to do is predict what the code is going to do. One of, as we get into um, deeper instructional strategies with, uh, with programming and programming courses and computer science courses, one of the lesson planning strategies or frameworks is something called PRIM. And we actually do a lot of free workshops on PRIM as well. Um, if you've been to some of our other workshops, you might have heard us talk about PRIM, but it's about using, like predicting what code is going to do. It's a really fabulous strategy to scaffold for our kids as they're learning what can be a pretty complex topic. So this is a great way to really um, explore what this code is going to do, make some predictions, and just learn to read the code and become comfortable with it. So teachers, be super intentional about this because this can be a very powerful part of your kid's learning experience. And I can run this. That's how I run my code. I can reset it. I can even step through this code to take it very slowly. And if I really come in and I'm messing all this stuff up, maybe I've add, added some other moves and I want to bring this back to what it was originally. I can click on more, I can click on history, and I can reset my code. Oops, I can reset my code. There we go. So super handy way to get back to what I had in the beginning. And by the way, teachers, free and pro teachers, you can see your students' history here. So another really cool option. All right, so that is the example. I'm going to jump to one of the exercises so you can see this. So an exercise, the first time you go to it, it's going to have a pop-up that gives you the directions. Now, the pop-up is fine until you start to get into more complex activities and you think, well, what were all the directions? Well, in this case, I could see the directions by clicking on the assignment tab on the right-hand side of the screen. So that's going to be helpful as kids get more and more complex with their code, especially with HTML. I will say web design, they need to be able to see some of that sometimes. So you'll definitely want them to know to click on assignment and you can click on show exercise to get this pop-up back. Um, every single code, um, I shouldn't say that. There's just a handful of them that don't have auto graders, but the vast, vast majority of these do have auto graders with them. And so if a student is ready to check their code, they can check it, see what's wrong with it, see what error they have. Teachers, you don't have to sit there and debug everything or look at line by line by line. You can check the code as well. So really cool option for checking this. Now, one of the reasons I wanted us to go through this is so you can start thinking about the structure of a lesson. So programming lessons, while it does have definitely those uh, code editors in them, what you can expect to see in the rest of CodeHS is the same sort of similar structure. So you're going to start with the lesson content. You're going to have some kind of formative quiz, um, maybe some other examples. In cyber, you might see some simulations. You might see some connections with some outside videos as well. And you might have some free response questions. So, and we will, we won't have time today, but I will definitely come back to customization in our remaining two workshops this week because you can easily, all teachers, can move these activities around. And if you are a pro teacher, the one thing that pro teachers can do as far as customizing that free can't 
is you can actually copy any of these activities and modify them, which is another cool feature. That would have made me, I, we didn't have really any customization when I was teaching. Um, this is a new-ish, well, new-ish, I guess it's been around for a few years, but I, I didn't have it. But the, the copying capability or the forking capability is pretty cool. So this is something that I wanna take a moment on. There is a lesson in um, the Intro to Software Technology course called Collaborative Programming. And this is where we're, we talk to the kids about what pair programming is. Um, there's even, you can still see this format here. We have the video, we've got the quiz. This little yellow icon or little yellow light bulb is a connection. So it's a video that comes from outside of CodeHS. And then we have a reflection, and this is just a, I shouldn't say just, it is a um, free response type question. So I'm going to click on this to go to it. And let me jump back and I'll grab the link for everybody. It is in Carol Challenges, Carol or Collaborative Programming, and I'm going to copy the link. So in case you want to check it out, there you go. It's also in the slides if you click that image. So in pair programming, you're going to see the video that talks about the importance of pair programming. This is actually something, pair programming is absolutely a legitimate um, programming strategy for many companies. We use it all the time at CodeHS. I'm always seeing where some of our engineers are coding together. Our engineers are super excited to jump in and help us program as well. I'm definitely not a programmer, um, but we use it all the time. So you can see the video, you can see the quiz, you can see a connection here. I think this connection is, oh, I was thinking it was a different video. There's so many out here. Um, but another example of when uh, pair programming is used and then a pair programming reflection. So kids can reflect on it. And then we go into a bunch of Carol challenges. These are a great place for kids to try out some pair programming. And they don't necessarily have to be collaborating on the exact same exercise. Pair programming is going to be about one student being the navigator and one student being the driver, right? One is going to be coding. One is going to be telling the other one what to code, and then they switch. Now, I do want to give you a quick overview, and I am going to go into this in more detail in another workshop. But I want to show you a little bit about another way you can actually pair program in CodeHS, and that's with the sandbox. How many of you have ever used the sandbox in CodeHS? I can get a hands, hands up, thumbs up, a yes. Have you used it? Have you not used it? You can just say no if you haven't to. I'm going to go to it really quickly. And if you have used the sandbox, have you collaborated in it? This is awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to take the time to show you this. So I'm going to create a brand new program. I am going to call this um, my cool program. <laughs> there we go. You can always change that name later. Now I'm going to click on create program. And now yeah, let's do Python. We've been talking about Python a lot. I can choose from any of these programming languages. So this truly is a pretty fully fledged coding editor. It's amazing. I have seen students and teachers create some of the most amazing programs in this coding editor. Um, and in fact, we have a whole teacher trainer program where teachers from around the United States present on different, um, different lessons that they've built, different ways they, they use CodeHS. And some of the programs they make are just stunning. So I'm gonna choose Python 3. I'm gonna click create program. All right, so here's my Python program. Now there's no auto grader here. This is a place where kids can be completely um, creative with whatever they're creating. There's a little bit of starter code that gets popped in. I can run that. But what I really wanna do is I want to collaborate. So over here on the left-hand side, I'm, gonna, I'm going to click on the collaborate icon. Oops. Oh, and this never stays for me. I need to fix this. If you've got questions about this, definitely let me know. I'm going to click on my settings icon. I'm going to change my editor to ace. There we go. That's all I had to do. And now I go back to collaborate and click enable. 
And I would love to invite you to click that link. And I'm going to wait for my friends to pop in. Oh, yay. There's Robin. There's Sonia. Excellent. Anybody else want to join? Now, what I would love for you to do, go ahead, pick a line, start typing, type whatever you want. And let's do this. Uh, you could even, whoops, start with a print statement and say, hi. Awesome. That's okay. You don't need to know Python. Love it. That is just fine. Let me show you what I do sometimes when I don't know. I select, I copy, I paste. <laughs> Perfect. Love it. Love it. And if you don't know, you can always make a comment. No, that's okay. Leave it, Robin. That's awesome. And that way I can run it. No errors. So cool. This is the coolest, one of the best tools ever. I love this. And you have no idea how excited I get when I see a group of teachers in here. So it is amazing to see kids use this. We're going to go into this tool in more detail. I'm going to leave it open. So if you want to hang out in there and type some stuff, you sure can. So, oh, and I've even got instructions. I forgot I put all this stuff in here on how to set up your sandbox, how to start a collaboration, everything. So you do have instructions here, but we will get into this in more detail as well. So some of the other things that I want to point out, and I'm going to do this kind of quickly just because we're getting to the end of our time together already. This is never long enough. I get too excited about stuff. So I want to look a little bit at the operating systems and software module. This is one of the modules that's going to show up in IST and IDT. Oh, I just saw your note, Robin. Yes, it is totally like Replit. Absolutely. The collaboration feature actually came about during the pandemic when everybody was remote. And now we just keep building it out. It's so cool. So operating systems and software. This one is going to look a little different because this is where we start getting into some of that networking content. So the lesson that I wanted to show you really quickly here, I'll drop the link, is comparing operating systems. So this one, again, starts with a video. It has that check for understanding quiz, but it's got these simulations. Now, I used to be the tech coordinator at my district. And that meant I was also the network administrator. So I was the one that was able to really decide what kind of computers we were going to have or help decide what kind of computers we were going to have. And I just knew we didn't have some of these computers. So I would spend time trying to make, um, build virtual machines, things like that. Well, now you don't have to. So if you are a Chromebook school, your kids don't know what Windows is. They now have a simulator here for that device. So there is a Windows simulation and there is a Mac simulation as well. So if I open that one up, there is our Mac simulator. You can open this in a different window all by itself. Vicky, you can absolutely simulate other operating systems. For those of you who are very into networking, and I don't think this is included in the IHT course, but we do actually have command line simulators as well, which is very cool. So I wanted to show you that. Um, and I also, oh, I wanna show you this quickly too. So the network attacks lesson. So this one is from the intro to hardware technology. So I believe I've got the link here. So in the network attacks lesson, and if I browse out here, I'll show you where it's at. This one is in, oh, I've got all kinds of stuff jammed in here. I've got both IST and IHT in here. And I think it is, it's under cyber. There we go, network attacks. So this one can be found right here. I'll throw the link out there to you. And when I head out there, there it is, too many tabs. Again, we can still see that exact same structure. There's my video, there's my slides, there's my quiz. And I'm gonna click on, is it check for vulnerabilities? No, no. 
Let me just, it's going to take me a second. There was a really cool simulation that you're going to see. Maybe it is in this one. Let me jump back here. There are some, a lot of really good simulations. Ah, oh, there are no vulnerabilities on my device. Whew. I hadn't checked myself before that. But there's some amazing, really cool tools here where you can absolutely have some fishing sim simulators, uh, some other simulators as well. I'm trying to find one that was so cool. Where you can actually try running some of the different simulations and you can enter in some command line prompts to actually take a look at network ports um, and other things like that. And I'm just gonna jump back out here for a second because there was a really neat one I wanted to show you and maybe I didn't link it. Maybe I didn't link it. There's some pretty amazing ones out here. And I know we're running short on time. Um, but once you get through protocols and you start learning about all of those networking protocols and you get into IT professionals, then you get to really take a look at, well, now how, how can these network uh, vulnerabilities really come apart for us? Um, and you, oh, here we go, port scanner simulation. That's the one I was looking for. This one is so cool. Notice it brings up this little pop-up for me. And I'm going to type in nmap localhost. And this simulation is going to scan to see what are the open ports on my computer. So there are a ton of simulations here. And if your kids are really into, hey, how'd they make that? They can even look at the code here. They can't hurt anything by changing it. So they can absolutely do that. So lots of amazing stuff. All right. I knew I was going to get too excited about things and we are at time. So all of these things, I've also created um, some other helps here. Know that I am going to show you, um, especially in the session on Thursday, we're going to walk through how to create a section, how to create a course, how to get yourself ready for your students. And I'm going to show you more of those actual how-tos with the site. So I've also included a ton of resources and links here. You're going to see the link for all of those Georgia DOE um, links that we've been sharing. Here's the Code HS Georgia guide, uh, the Georgia page as well, and uh, the working document for George, Georgia here too. And, uh, and if you want to learn more about Code HS Pro, this is going to be another place to check that out by browsing to codehs.com slash pro. We have a ton of other links as well. One of the, we've got a few here, like uh, becoming a Code HS certified educator. I'd highly encourage anybody to absolutely uh, join the, or register for the Code HS certified educator program. I was one, anybody can be one. It would be great to have you. I'm gonna drop the link into chat for registering for the other sessions as well. So if you go on to codehs.com slash free PD, you're gonna see the other sessions that are available. This is also a really good page to watch because we do post regular free workshops throughout the school year. This is where we also post the teacher trainer ones. You're gonna see, um, here's the one we're in today, but you can go ahead and register for any of these other ones. Rural, uh, here's our rural um, session. I encourage you to sign up, even if you feel like, oh, I don't know if I count as rural, sign up. We're all a community. This is the one you'll really want for getting started with Code HS. We also have a short one coming up on the 5th, if you'd like to revisit it, and tons of other things here as well. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is going to be in this link here, join the Code HS community Slack workspace. So we do have a community workspace in Slack. Um, it's it, We want it to have more chatter, so we would love to invite you to join it. I've actually created a workspace in, or a channel in that Slack workspace for Georgia teachers, and I'll be posting some updates there. And it's a great place for discussions and to keep us all connected. So those next two workshops in our summer workshop series for Georgia teachers. Tomorrow we have CS in rural Georgia schools. 
Um, again, if you feel like mm, not sure if that's going to apply, you can always sign up. If you can't come, I'll always send you that uh, that uh, recording as well. And the big one is that Thursday session, 4 to 5.30, where we're focusing on the platform and getting you ready to teach with uh, the Code HS platform. One last link. I would love it if you could take a moment to let me know how I did today. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, um, we have done a lot with Georgia and I, it's one of my favorite states. I wish I was in Georgia right now with all of you. I love Georgia so much, but let us know what else we can bring you. Is there something you want to see, uh, see more of? Definitely let us know. We absolutely take a look at those survey results and we tweak what we do and we see what else we can bring to our teachers. Um, and you'll find, especially for those of you who are new to Code HS, one of the cool things is how responsive the team is. So if there's anything you need, we got you. And I'm gonna finish up by just saying thank you. Um, you've got a ton of options to spend your time and you chose to spend an hour, over an hour and a half <laughs> with me today because <laughs> I always go along. So thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, I appreciate your time. And Melissa, I'm just reading your message. I'm gonna pass that along to the curriculum team for sure. I would love to see that created. So I'll see what we can do. Um, I have a feeling we are not done uh, in any way with creating courses for Georgia or any state. So absolutely, I'll pass it along. Thank you, everybody. This has been awesome. I thank you for letting me do what I love to do. Love to connect with all of you. So thank you. And I am looking forward to hopefully seeing you all tomorrow or Thursday or both days. So come on back. Thanks all. Have a wonderful evening and reach out if you've got any questions. Bye everybody. Thank you.